Hey everyone, so today's video I want to do a big fish room tour, consolidate everything what I'm doing, explain everything because I've got some big ideas, projects coming up and I want to consolidate where I am and let everyone know where I'm up to before I start making the changes. So we stick around to the end, I'll explain a lot of changes that are going to go on with the channel over the next couple of months. So I'm going to start off with my smallest tanks and work my way up to the biggest, show everyone what's going on. Let's have a look. Here they are. Digging away, I want some shrimp projects. Hopefully I want to uh, move into Caradina shrimp. Anyone who watches the channel knows uh, I've been getting uh, a lot of people telling me they want to see me do uh, Caradina shrimp. So I'm just uh, playing with Neos at the moment of figuring out the basics. I already know how to do the water and stuff, so it won't be too much of a challenge. And I already obviously understand aqua soil and softening water. So I want a few shrimp tanks. Hopefully I can... Uh, breed and sell some to uh, help fund some other projects because uh, some uh, fish tank tokens are always welcome. So there's my red tank. So I've got little fry. Or so I've got little baby red cherry shrimp. Some on filters, some on the sand. You can't really see the ones on the sand. Uh, I've got some snails in here, put another leaf in. Fed them some bloodworm on Friday. There's a couple of buried females. So what I'm going to do is keep the best of the shrimplets, get the rest with me others in the big tank. Right, my blues starting to get a bit of green wall action. A little bit worried by uh, how fast that's grown, to be honest. But you know, I've got the uh, all pond solution lights with the blue, and every tank I have blue light on, I get algae. So a little bit concerned, but I can look at changing them out. I've got other lights. See, there's the little baby blues. I'm gonna keep the rest. Put the others with me others in the other tank, and then my yellows in here. I've got mal from aquarium delirium. They're doing doing amazing there's a very female in here I haven't seen any baby shrimp yet so keep my eyes open for that on top of the tank I'm doing a bit of uh, exciting stuff I've got salvinia in here I've got a uh, bit of Amazon frog bit in there and then I've got some if I can see it red roof floaters so I want to get them going in the tanks and I'm trying to separate them from the duckweed because I'm fed up with duckweed I want it out my life there's two things I want out my life at the moment in a lot of my tanks is snails because they eat fish eggs and duckweed because then this is my 25 litre wall start tank now the main goal for this tank for me is i want to see how it matures over time rather than wanting it to look like it is now i want to see how it matures and it's doing really well like these are this is dwarf sag and there's a little crypt down there i just popped it in because it was already in the tank it was in the cuttings that i planted the tank up with i took all these but as you can see, it's absolutely flying. It's putting runners out. It's come across here, and then that's putting new plants out, and then there's another one coming along. I've never put any fish in this tank, but there was two, must have been fish eggs. At the back there, you can see uh, two rummy nose rasbora. They must have been eggs on the plants, and you see them swim past in that gap every now and again. They usually stay at the back when the light's on. Once the light goes off, they're all over the tank flying. But <laughs> when the light's on, you, they never come out. Sometimes if you stay still, they'll pop forward for a bit and then go back. But no amount of feeding or anything draws them out while the light's on. But the dwarf sage, a bit of a conflict of interest because I thought I'll plant it up and then I've got dwarf sage because a local shop don't have dwarf sage on the lists. So I thought I'd get a bit and grow it out. And then I think to myself, well, I've set this tank up once, see how it matures over time. And then I want to pull dwarf sage, a bit of a conflict of interest. But I just, I'm, I'm enjoying this tank. It's nice and simple, no filtration on it. Just top it up. Should do a few more water changes on it really, you know me, like even though I do the wall stab method, I do say that the wall stab method requires water changes and I do 25% water changes on all my tanks, wall stab tanks. So this tank, I'm calling my hybrid method tank. It's got a few different things going on, let me show you what I mean. So it's been dated and I haven't used a normal textbook wall stab dirt. Um, I was watching some of Father Fisher's videos and he was using sphagnum or peat moss and I was like that, that's a good idea. So I've used a mix of 70% peat moss, I've used 20% topsoil, organic topsoil like the wall style method. And I've used 10% grit to uh, open all the soil up, I know you can't see it very well. But that just gives the peat moss gives it like it'll absorb nutrients and then like obviously the organic topsoil is nutrients, sand and a 
bit of clay that'll hold more nutrients and then the grit just opens the soil up so the roots can get around that's what I'm doing and the reason why I call it hybrid is I'm running the fluval plant on all the whites are on 75% the reds are on 35 and the blues are on 3 I'm not a big fan of blue light there's a bit of algae on the on the glass there and what I'm doing is I'm running CO2 if you can see there and got my drop checker there CO2 is down here uh, I need to top that up but you can see the bubbles I'm running per second and I'm also dosing with TNC complete um, it's fertilizer I always find I get a little bit of hair algae when I'm running it but what I'm finding is the plants are growing so fast I'm just using the dirt as like an aqua soil I find it's great for uh, growing plants in I've, I've, do you know I'm getting a lot of people telling me lately that they're struggling with their Amazon swords and if you look, see like them leaves there, like the melting back, these ones here. I'm, the, people are showing me a lot of leaves like this where it's melting, um, that one there. And obviously these big ones, like I'm telling people to have a look down in the middle there for new growth. So there's quite a bit of spot algae on the tank this morning, but I'm going to do a water change and those with ferts today, so I'm going to Problems it still need dial in, it's still like cycling, but with your Amazon swords, you look down the bottom, see if there's new growth. Like the, the this stuff's been growing out of walls of the stuff that's melting, so it's gonna die back. But what you're looking for is your new growth, and that'll tell you how you're doing. Now, obviously, with mine, I never had any luck with Amazon swords unless they're in dirt. All these are in here, they're like quite slow growing with heavy root feeders, so um. That's what well, I, I tend to like them sort of plants. Just down the back there, I've got an Apongigeton, Madagascar Lace, and Madagascar Ensis. These are Crypt Walker Eye, Crenum Calamistratum, and then I've, got, then I've got my Dwarf Lily. There's a couple of holes in the leaves on that. Like, struggling with my Dwarf Lilies, I need to sit down and figure out what's going wrong with them. I think I had big, beginner's luck, assuming they were really easy, and since then I find them on a few problems, a few issues, I need to dial in. And then here I've got Crypt uh, Bacchetti, I think it is, uh, Crypt Balance, Crypt Pink Flamingo around here. They're all melted and now it's starting to throw loads of new leaves out. And then these are Crypt um, Wendetti Eye Brown. Now I'm not sure, all these came as Crypt Mix. So I assume they were just, I assume they were just Cryptocorn Wendetti, Wendetti Eye. There's a ponge in there. I'm not sure what it is. I wanna, I'm waiting for them leaves to throw out. It hasn't really thrown any leaves. So I'm waiting for it to get going. Now this one here, I bought it as a Crenum Natans. Now looking at the leaves, it looks like a uh, Crenum Tyanum. But, um, and it, it doesn't look great. But what I've seen is like, I've seen a few Crenum Natans where they've started out with straight leaves. Now if you look on the, if you look at the pups on me, if you look at the pups on my Crenum Calamistratum, they've got similar leaves to the to this. So I'm wondering whether they're like juvenile leaves and then it'll throw adult leaves. I initially thought it was Tyanum, but it, it could be it could be Natanz like with juvenile foliage. I don't know. I'm gonna have to wait and see. But as I say with the swords, a lot of people telling me that they're, they're struggling with them. Feed them at the roots now. Everyone tells you to feed Everyone tells you to feed root feeding plants with um, root tabs, but root tabs are just micronutrients. And all the soils, just it's just a massive reservoir of micronutrients. So, like, for me, if, if you're keeping heavy root feeding plants, uh, like, you need to go dirty like the wall start, I think. That's, that's my opinion, anyway. I mean, obviously, there are other ways, but, like, they, they tend to be far more expensive than buying, like, eight quid's worth of potting soil. So here's my 80 litre tank with my Melitania, Melitania trifasciata, going to river fry, growing out nicely. I want to get some tally carbon in here as soon as these gone or the tally tar, tally car, I always say it wrong. So I've got these going on in here. The, the tank's a bit cloudy. What happens is I uh, take the duckweed out and it seems to go cloudy. And then the duckweed grows back in, the tank clears up because, you know, floating plants clear our tanks and then massive imbalance when they go. There's uh, a couple of there's a couple of rose, chocolate rose, cherry shrimp in here. I'm thinking of 
ordering a few more, setting up a colony because like chocolate rose, green jades and oranges or and maybe snowballs or something I'm interested in. Now this tank for some reason is my favourite tank. I throw little bits of uh, plant clippings in here and uh, they just, you know if they're struggling they bounce back. I leave all the uh, mulm in here basically because it's a micronutrient source. Got boost, never thought to do anything that's growing nicely. Got a bit of uh, Ludwigia repens in there, threw some leaves in. Got an absolute ton of blue diamond shrimp I've bred. Got me Wuponga red laser, these are going in my hybrid method tank. I've got me peppermint bristle nose, don't, don't know what to do with this. I'm currently thinking about shutting this tank down. Um, I don't know what to do with it, but I just have loads of fun in here. It's a farm tank, so I'll get bits like this bits. Like, let's have a look. So we've got stuff coming out the top, I think that looks dead cool, that's a uh, Hygrophilia Polysperma. I've got this going on, which is a uh, Rosenvig, Alphanotheria Rosenvig, it just hangs round and it's growing, so just little bits and pieces that I find, that I dropped them in the tank and they explode in here, so I've got down in the corner there is Ludwigia Repens, gone bright red, just cool tank because it's shallow, like the light penetrates really well. In the Sponge filter, I've got a ton of Rotala Rotundifolia growing out of it. I don't remember putting Rotala Rotundifolia in here, but it's doing amazing in there. So I'm leaving it alone. There's some uh, water wisteria in here and I'm trying to get going. Don't know where it is, but uh, although it looks a mess, it's a little plant farm and I really enjoy it. It's got loads of nutrients in there because of the fish and the shrimp and the snails. But I want, as I say, I want to get rid of duckweed and I want to try and get rid of snails so we can start breeding properly. Here's my beginner planted tank, this side's exploded, it's all Val and uh, LOD denser and then I've got stuff starting to transition, I've got Ludwigia repens. Ludwigia repens, I've got um, some Rotala, doesn't seem to be doing amazing, Rotundifolia, Rotala Wilici, you can see where it's transitioned and I've just got the, the growing tips that I've grown in my water. Leaf job fern, I've got my dwarf sage going on, I've got Alphanotheria going on there, um, some Hygrophilia polysperm. What I'm trying to do is like prune them now and there's a push the, the growth back down the stems and tidy them up a bit because they're looking a bit leggy and a bit worn out but they're starting to do better in this tank. I, I want to get shut of these guppies and then I've got my angel fish in here. I want to get them actually breeding, like try to breed them. Um, might get some more angels just to because I don't think the males try and very hard to breed and then like look at this Val all over the gaff um, I know a couple of people who want Val we'll sort some out so you can have some this is my five foot tank hey there's my female there uh, my female bristle nose you don't really see it there's three males and a female in here I wanted to get some more females really all the shrimp bombing round all the males, the female must have shed and they're all looking for her to make baby shrimp. Females on there. Um the spider one along the thing. Yeah, so here's another one. I've got um a few a few anubias here and I've got some Bruce of Philandra. Now the Bruce of Philandra long term, I want to get them in the uh, shrimp tanks, get them on like a little ceramic, you know the ceramic filter media you get, like the little ball, uh, circles. I want to glue them, stick them on there. I've got Anubis bonsai. I'd love to get them in all the shrimp, shrimp tanks. I reckon they'd look cooler in a shrimp tank. Little baby uh, cherry shrimp there. There's tons of them in here. I, last time I counted, there was 250 and I haven't counted the back off, so could be 500. I want to move some of them on, get some uh, fish tank credits, so I can fund in more projects. Like I say, I want to do... Uh, Couple of, I want to up my game, you see him in the poll, or if you didn't, I want to up my game. So, yeah, what, what I was saying was the Anubias, a lot of people saying they're getting like blackbeard algae on it and they're struggling with it. Now, the leaves on Anubias are really slow growing, so my advice and what I do is try and tuck them under like fast growing stem plants. I don't know whether you can see that, like I've got, I trimmed a load of boosts. I trimmed a load of bacopa and threw that in here, so that's on the surface at the moment. I'm going to plant it up like I have with this. I'm lying, I didn't even plant it. Just put it weight around it and floated it into the tank. Here's my crenum. It's actually starting to grow and like me. It's putting out loads of new uh, foliage. Like <laughs> The longer I have it, the more I enjoy this, but I'd like to uh, get this planted up. 
get it out that pot and get in some soil. I think once the roots hit the soil, it exploded, got happy. And then there's another narrow leaf jar fern with all baby jar ferns on. I should do something with them, propagate them and get them in a grow out tank, as I say. And then we've got tons of Ludwigia repens, we've got Alternatheria, Rosenvig down here, we've got Walichi. We've got all the stuff that I dropped in months ago and it's starting to sprout up. Liminophilia ripped loads of that out. And then the Amazon sword with the Amazon sword pups all over the gaff. So there's that. And then my personal pride and joy, my uh, wall start tank with my rainbows. That, look at that rainbow this morning. Look at that colour. Bright orange, it looks amazing. Like, I absolutely love this tank. And then there's, I've got two loaches in here on patrol, hopefully doing uh, the business, getting rid of these, uh, rid of the snails. There's Pongegeaton growing down near the Madagascar, the Madagascar lace coming out the bottom. And then we've got this, I don't know whether it's Crispus or Longifolia. Um, that Amazon sword flying, that one is an absolute unit. I've got a couple of holes in the leaves, but um, I, I don't know whether that's the snails or what's going on with it, but it can't be nutrient deficiency because we've dealt with the nutrient deficiency, haven't we? So we, we balance all nutrients in here, and I know all the nutrients are on point. All the crypts that were down here, um, we had the heat wave a couple of weeks ago, and they all just melted. And crypts don't like heat. Um, I think I'm going to give up keeping them in the fish room and just keeping them in the house, to be honest, where the temperature's stay, stay stable. Uh, Pennywort, it's absolutely flying now. There's like tons of it at the top somewhere. I don't know where it is, but every now and again I come through, like, come across a big handful of Pennywort that seems to float around the tank. I mean, lily bulbs, like, they look cool in here and um, they don't look as great in the other tank. I mean, I've got more dwarf sarge, it's growing across here. It's, it's right up to here now, so I'm guessing now the you know now the crypts are gone. I'm guessing this whole area is going to fill out with sarge, and I'm just going to let it survival of the fittest. The Wallstead tank, isn't it? We've been coping, chopped that right back, put it in the tank above. There's so much val at the back, and it's coming down all the sides. Look at all the runners. There's you can't really see the runners on camera. There's runners all over the gaff, so they're everywhere. There's and I've been pulling it out and dropping it in that little farm tank I've got. Look at that. This is me Skittles tank. Pull all my coals out and throw them in this tank. And uh, they're doing well. What's <laughs> my a rainbow header on camera? I'd be devastated. But yeah, tank's flying. Um, I've got Ocelot. Let's zoom in. I've got Ocelot Red, Amazon Sword. Doesn't really come up well on camera. And then. This one, Reuben, it's it's red in real life, looks green on camera. Um, I wish I could show some of me. One day I'll have a dead good camera and I'll be able to show you dead good stuff. But for today, this is what we've got going on. And last but not least, we've got my immersed growing plants. There's my uh, Ludwigia repens. It's uh, really starting to take off. You can see down here. You can see down there where it's uh, starting to send out some runners and stuff and then we've got the Rotala Rotunda Folia it's got loads going on in here as you can, as you can see you know it's doing, it's doing really well and then the Bacopa Cataliniana as you can see it's starting to uh, starting to get a few shoots coming out of it now so I'm looking forward to seeing what goes on with these three these are my uh, projects. My Pofos that used to be on top of the big tank. That's here. So yeah, everything's doing well. So there's my tanks, that's what I've been up to. Right, so changes. I've got a load of tanks in storage. Um, I'm getting a load out. So I'll officially have more tanks outside the fish room than in the fish room. And I want to look at a way of expanding the fish room. Because the land that the fish room's actually on is probably double that way and maybe three times that way so if I could get like a bigger fish room I could get all these tanks in here I've got a seven foot tank two five foot tanks like this one two four foot tanks like this one I've got two of these I've got two of the hundred litre two of the eighty litre and I've got a ton more tanks that I could get in here and get stuff doing because I was looking through some like because with my old projects like I was looking through my old projects and get my old tanks and it <sighs> It stood out to me that 
none of my tanks five years ago was standard tap water like i was running everything through reverse osmosis and i was running lake tanganyika tanks with the waste with the high nutrient water with like you know the high kh high gh stuff um i was running and with the RO water i was keeping discus i was breathing in acidic water and i was keeping an sps salt water tank i asked everyone what they wanted to to see next from the channel and they all said black water and i thought that's cool because you know i've got angels i've got plecos and there's a few other things, so I'd like to set up a nice. So I'd like to set up a nice atmospheric displayed black water tank. Maybe grow some different angels out, like Rio Nane or some more Manica Peru. Um, I've got peppermints, wabba mustard. I'd like to get the wabba mustard out here, get that and them in a black water tank. I could get some like Cory's, Um some nice fish like that, and get, get like a really atmospheric scape black water tank with a little spotlight out, so it looks cool. Um, I was, you know, toying with the idea of doing an SPS reef tank. I love the idea of doing that and I've already got the lights in storage. I've got some more Fluval 3.0 lights for the plants. So I could easily set up a reef tank because I've got all the gear in storage and I could set like, I love the idea of keeping like pistol shrimp with a watchman goby and you know, I'm into symbiotic relationships on that. That's what drew me to the wall stab method. So I could do that, get some like a pistol shrimp and a watchman goby. So the pistol shrimp is blind. Uh, but digs caves and the watchman goby sits in the cave with the little antenna from the shrimp on the goby and if any predators come around they both dive in the cave it's dead cool and i was thinking get some clownfish with a uh, rose bubble tip anemone but everyone voted for the black water so i was thinking that like and i was happy to do either but with the guy saying black water i'm like well i can do that first it's probably a bit easier um get the ph down get some nice fish in there and make it look really atmospheric i think it'd be a cool time for the channel to see and plus i'm going to set it up somewhere where i can just sit there and stare at it all day because ironically all the tanks i've got none of them i see as i'm passing during the day none of them are in a place where i can watch them and so that's the plan i've got everyone's told me they want to see some guests on the live stream so i've got some potential guests coming up which are they're outside the norm you know i've got like we've got a community going haven't we and you know it, seems to be everyone the same people are on the lives and so while i love all that you know there might be some views or like i want to see something fresh so i've got some lined up some people lined up who we haven't necessarily seen on the gang's live stream so i'm going to set them up have, have a chat with them and see what they're up to and share their project i wanted people with like different projects to what everyone else is doing so some fresh view and something interesting and i've and I've also got some fish room tours set up, like some amazing fish room tours, like one of them's like Joey Mullen standard kind of fish room. And there's a couple of other local breeders who are like bang into genetics and like I thought I'd sit down with them and, you know, do like a light fish room tour, talk about his tanks and then sit down a bit more in depth, talk about the genetics of breeding stuff and what he expects to come from what, because like I don't know any of this stuff, so it'd be... Uh, He's banged on to me, but I've never been in a situation where I've listened that closely. Guys, thank you for all your support, all your likes, comments, shares, subscriptions mean so much to me. The channel's getting to a point now where they're about 850, and it dawned on me that I'm only 150 away from the big 1K. So I'm really going to push it, up my game, get some fish shop tours in, fish room tours, get some really interesting guests on the live, hopefully. I've got a few lined up. I'm going to set up some more exciting fish tanks because, as I say, where I was five years ago, I wasn't keeping anything in tap water and it, it just occurred to me. I'm like, I need to get back up to where it was and show you guys what I can do. And I think you really enjoy it. So take care, guys. Please subscribe. Hit the like button. And I'll see you in the next one.